Hey y'all, it's my review for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, episode 8. I can't believe we're 8 weeks in. It feels like not that much has happened, but then again, the ratings have been reflecting that. So we opened the episode with Lisa and her family, and she's talking about her faith and joining Heather's choir. I swear, every time we see Lisa and her family, like, the scene just looks staged, and her kids look like they're being forced to be on camera. Next team with Jen, Whitney, and Lisa, and they're all going skiing. This time, Whitney the expert has them all going on the main slope instead of the beginner one. Afterwards, they're discussing that chaotic choir rehearsal from the last episode, and turns out Lisa and Whitney both made the choir. Again, is anyone being paid to be in Heather's choir? Because it looks like they all just doing it for shits and giggles. Whitney then tells Liz about her last encounter with Heather and how she was physically removed from her house. Now, I mean, she did kind of push her towards the door, but she didn't like, you know, get out. Whitney then made sure to let Lisa know that the reason why Heather went into orbit was because she was defending her. Like, Whitney is just so messy. Like, she can say that she's on a new path and everything, but she's still the same messy broad. And Jen is still pissed with Heather for not having her back with Angie H. So that makes three people mad at Heather right now. Also hearing Whitney explain her side, I still think she's full of shit and she's saying that, oh, I'm on this new journey now. I'm trying not to be messy like I once was. Bullshit. Next scene, we are with the husbands. Are they really trying to make Fetch happen right now? <laughs> So Coach Shaw is hosting this Kiki for the husbands. It's him, Lisa, Meredith, and Whitney's husbands, and also the two friends of husbands, uh, Angie Kay and Dana's. I mean, we still haven't gotten a proper introduction of the two friends of, so who are these random men, you know? This scene was such a waste of time, y'all. Like, they didn't even say anything. We see Jen make a quick appearance in the scene before she leaves. You know, her narcissist ass couldn't help it. This scene, y'all, was so unnecessary. I mean, at least the food looked good. The conversation just felt so forced. At least on Jersey, the husbands have a camaraderie and it looks like they hang out outside of the cameras. But in this case, they're meeting some of the guys for the first time and I highly doubt that Coach Shaw hangs out with Lisa or Meredith's husband on the regular. So then we see Lisa and Meredith's husband, they want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, so they go outside. It seems like they don't have that much animosity towards each other, so I don't know why they had to separate themselves from the other guys in order to talk about it. But they come to the conclusion that this is between their wives and not them, so they hug it out and go back inside. So then Coach Shaw is in the hot seat, and they're asking him how he's doing since Jen got busted. You know, in this scene, like my friend, I just got off the phone with him, and he brought up a really good point. How come no one is asking Coach Shaw directly to his face, did he know anything about it? I would think that's the million dollar question everybody's wondering, but they don't know him like that, so of course they wouldn't ask. Cause you know, we all questioned Erica, did she know something, which personally I thought she did. We all thought Phaedra knew something was going on with Apollo. Hell, we thought Phaedra was the mastermind and Apollo just took the fall. Anywho, we see most of the guys comfort Coach Shaw. And again, this scene was cringe as hell because they don't really know each other like that. They had a lot of awkward silence and shit. They were all put together by production just to talk about their wives. Next scene, we're with Meredith, her sister, and their children. But thank God Brooks is not in this scene. She says she's in a better place with her sister compared to when she was filming the reunion last year. We get a little flashback to that and look at racist Jenny. I'm so glad they kicked her ass off. Anywho, that is definitely her sister. They both have these valley girl android voices. She then tells her sister about the beef she's having with Lisa and now she has a bone to pick with Whitney for throwing her under the bus. According to Meredith, she says she wasn't the one saying that Lisa was having an affair. Now, Meredith, you are helping spreading the rumor, but Whitney is just as at fault as you, if not more. But for some reason, her and Lisa are all buddy-buddy now. And I actually prefer Lisa and Whitney as enemies rather than friends. Y'all know I usually say it the other way around, but I don't like Lisa and Whitney as an alliance. I just don't. Next scene we're with Heather at the first choir rehearsal, and I'm sure all nine people in line made the choir. We then cut to Jen and Angie K as they're driving to Heather's rehearsal. Jen is still complaining that Heather didn't have her back. And I'm like, girl, you are about to go to prison. That should be the least of your concern right now. 
Angie K then sells out the other new girl, Dana, by telling Jen what she said when they were together with Meredith. She said she called Jen a bully in reference to Angie H. Side note, next season, if there is one, we only need one Angie. I'm tired of saying Angie H and Angie K. There needs to only be one. We then flash back to the scene where it's just the new girls and Meredith. I'm guessing it wasn't that interesting. But Dana said the way Jen was coming at Angie, it was like she was bullying her. I mean, that's all she said. And Angie K didn't have to go run tell that. Of course Jen is pissed, and I'm sure the next time she sees Dana, she's gonna bite her head off. We're back at the rehearsal, Angie H is there, Whitney arrives and Heather goes up to her all excited, hugs her as if she didn't just throw her out her house the last time she saw her. I'll admit that was a little fake on Heather's part. Also, it looks like again, they're both hopeful that their friendship will remain intact. This is Brandy and Malaysia all over again from Basketball Wives. I am tired of it. We know it's not gonna get resolved. Hell, they still hate each other present day and this is after Girls Trip 3. So the rest of the ladies arrive, but just as we think they're all gonna be cordial, as soon as the rehearsals start, Lisa tells Heather that she was thinking about quitting as they hug. So this starts a conversation about their differences. Child, and as they're going back and forth, we have the choir practicing in the background, which I'm sure production had a lot to do with. They're going, ha 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 ha, as they're like, keep arguing. The choir gets louder, ha 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 Ah, this is the wackiness that I'm talking about. To the point where I'm just like, what am I watching right now? Lisa continues to plead her case why she's in the right, but you know Heather ain't budging. She then asks Heather point blank, do you like me? It's a yes or no question. Heather hesitates. <laughs> she doesn't even answer the question. She says, why is that important to you? <laughs> Good one, Heather. <laughs> I would have just said no. At this moment, I don't like you. They really can't reach a conclusion and it is so frustrating to watch. We then cut to Angie H pulling Jen to the side to talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. Jen is surprisingly receptive and they agree to move forward on the terms that Angie's husband publicly apologizes, which seems fair, but again, like all he did was use Jen's last name. He didn't do anything to her, troll her. He trolled Lisa. But hey, y'all let me know in the comments if y'all felt Jen had a right to be angry. We're back with Lisa and Heather, and now Lisa's bringing up the rumors about her that Heather was involved in. Again, I'm not sure why she isn't just as mad at Whitney, because she's the one that spread the rumor. Heather didn't. Even if Heather heard the rumor, she still didn't run and tell anybody. Whitney did. So then Lisa asked Whitney to come over, and now it's two against one. I do agree with them on the fact that Heather inviting the both of them was fake. They then both call out Heather on trying to move on and conveniently forgetting her part in the situation. Heather has had enough, and she walks off. I think at this point, her and Whitney are done. Whitney even confirms it in her confessional. After that unresolved argument, they all finally start rehearsing together, and they sound awful. They just wasting people's time, including ours. Next scene, we're at Meredith's residence and Dan is coming over to visit. She looks so plain. Like, what strip mall do they pick her up from? Like, she needs a glam team stat. Meanwhile, we cut to Jen and Angie K kicking by the pool. They're talking about the next girl's trip, and it looks like Jen's gonna organize it, but, you know, of course they can't leave the country, so they're gonna all go to San Diego. She wants to have a fun time. She's tired of the spiritual shit. She just wants to turn up. Coincidentally, they then FaceTime Meredith to invite her, and then Meredith says, oh, Dana's with me, which gives her the perfect opportunity to confront Dana. She tells her, I would invite you, but I heard you were talking shit about me. Now, I'm a little impressed by Dana because she doesn't back down like the minion Angie K. She just tells her she doesn't like how she talks to people sometimes. Jen hears this and she gets enraged. She tells Meredith bye, hangs up the phone. She then goes into a temper tantrum as Angie K is trying to calm her down. Jen then gets out the pool, storms out, with Angie K looking stupid again. And that is where the episode ends. I hope Angie K knows she started this whole mess. I hate it when the new girl tried to throw the other new girl under the bus just so she can get some leverage in the group. It's mad, corny, and thirsty. Anyway, I thought this episode was all right. It had moments, yet again, like the other episodes. But this franchise isn't must-see like Beverly Hills was, and that may explain the ratings.
things. I also think it's crazy that Jen Shaw is being charged with a felony and is not at the top of the plot line totem pole. Like, you have Whitney versus Heather, then Lisa versus Heather, and then Jen going to prison. It's just like an afterthought. Like, no one talks about it like how we want them to. Like, for instance, with Jersey. Like, that was the entire plot of New Jersey. Even with Erica Jane on Beverly Hills, and she wasn't even being charged with anything, that's all they were talking about. So it's just so weird that, you know, on Salt Lake City, it's just an afterthought. So then they released the mid-season trailer, which wasn't bad. I mean, I'm still curious how Heather got that black eye, but something tells me that production is full of shit and she did something clumsy or something. What I'm really looking forward to seeing this season is Jen Shaw putting in that guilty verdict. That's the real tea. Anyway, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all for the next episode. Bye.